our men again. And what were we on the reservation lands? Dogs. To be put in a place and kept there till we starve. Topoka, we ride to find food, not war. The white people have food. They are fat. And our people are hungry. We will hunt, not steal. tried to shoot me. I killed that one. The other will return with an army of long knives. Let them come. To kill us all? No. There is another way. And the rail should arrive any time the end of this week, which puts us handsomely in debt as usual. No risk. Business is booming. No risk? What if something happens? Right now, any delay at all would be dangerous. Well, staying awake's a whole lot more dangerous than sleeping, too, but it's a lot more fun. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, but I'm nervous, and I could be right. In that case, you can always say you told me so. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make you a sporting proposition. Uh-oh. Cut your high card. If you win, I'll cancel the order on the rails. Ben, I couldn't gamble on a decision like that. Why not? I would. All right, you gamble and, and I'll worry. <laughs> That's the story of this partnership. Why don't you go to bed and get some rest? And don't worry about anything. Next week, the BPS and D will be forging into new prosperity. Good night. Did you hear? Hear what? End in trouble. Mordecai Peters rode in a scalp lock and he was ambushed. Dan Force was with him and got killed. Mordecai says there's a whole war party. He's bringing his wife and kids into town. It's true, Ben. White Mountain Apaches have left the reservation. That means war. There is no water. There is no food. We come only to hunt. Dan Forrest was killed. It's an accident. I've known Cachero for a long time. He doesn't want war. He sent me a message. He only wants to talk. Are you going? Yes. And hope we can work something out. If Cachero's people can get food, there won't be any trouble. I'll get my horse. No. I want you to go to the Buffalo Pass, Dave. Meet the troops. Tell them that I'm talking with Cachero. I'll bring him in at the supply dump east of Briggs Junction. We can talk with the army there. Will the long knives come in peace? They'd better. I'll be with Cachero. I'll take the work train to Buffalo Pass. Good luck, Dave. Thank you. For what? For not saying I told you so.
few miserable rejects. Two to one says a little lady can clear and charge the gun and commence firing quicker than any of you. You're on, Stoddard. There's no female can beat my time on that piece. That raccoon could beat your time. Go. I'll be right behind you in the next payroll line, recruit. The sergeant sure has a lot of confidence in you, Miss Anderson. <laughs> Big gamble. He knew I cut my teeth on a Gatling gun. <laughs> Major, what military genius picked this bunch for a campaign? Well, you're looking at it, Mr. Tarrant. I've seen Comanches on firewater better behaved. Well, the captain agrees with you. You should read the service records. Those records will be wiped clean if they prove themselves. Yours too, Captain Anderson. Oh, we're hoping you won't have to prove anything, Major. Ben Calhoun's gone up to talk to Cachero. With any luck, he'll talk the Apaches right back on the reservation. Well, it's going to be a normal campaign. We spend half our time fighting the enemy, the other half fighting civilian interference. With a bunch of roughnecks and a Gatling gun, how do you figure to stop an Apache uprising? By cutting off its head before it gets started. We grab Kachera and his sub-chief and ship him down to Florida. We hold them there as hostages until the Indians go back on the reservation. Well, just like that, huh? Just like that. smashed the equivalent of a regiment. Major, you just started an Indian war. My men didn't start any trouble, Calhoun. The trouble started when the Apache left the reservation. I saw what the drought did to their reservation. They had no choice. They either had to leave or starve. Starvation comes under the Bureau of Indian Affairs. You take it up with them. All Indian Affairs has given them is promises. The Apaches can't eat promises, Major. The Army isn't responsible for the mistakes of every government department. Maybe not. But you don't have to compound them either. Mister, the other side always has some justice in its cause. That's no answer. Well, Calhoun, I wasn't sent here to talk. At Gettysburg, I didn't ask the Rebs to stay off Little Round Top. I drove them off. With a handful of men and a Gatling gun. Well, if my attempt fails, they'll send a brigade if necessary. All to make the Apache starve. To make them obey the law. And if you don't like the law, you write your congressman. Captain, if I was trying to build this railroad by the book, we never would get it finished. And if we didn't run the army according to the book, this country wouldn't be safe for your railroad. By the time you've finished out here in this part of the country, it won't have any need for a railroad. Calhoun, what are you bleeding for? The territory or your investment? Both. When one gets hurt, the other one bleeds. <laughs> Very 
very popular with raccoons. <laughs> Look, if you like pets, I can get you a good deal. I know a fella in scalp lock wants to get rid of a skunk real cheap. Oh. <laughs> well, don't worry, his smell's been taken out. <laughs> well, thanks anyway, Barnabas, but I learned young. Pets in the army just don't mix. It's too hard leaving them behind when you have to pack up for the next post. Can't you take them with you? Mm, it's too much trouble. The quartermaster takes a dim view of transporting dependents' pets. Restored my faith in people. It's nice to see somebody that's not looking for trouble. Civilians don't have a corner on personal problems, Mr. Calhoun. No. They don't solve them with a Gatling gun, either. What should Apaches expect when they break treaties? Not 300 rounds a minute from a Gatling gun just because they want a chance to explain their problem? I understand their problem and yours. So do the Major and my father. There's just nothing they can do about it. I wouldn't say starting an Indian war is exactly doing nothing. That was an accident. But if they could grab Cochero, wouldn't that solve all the problems? I doubt Cochero would see it that way. this to me. Correct, Sir Barnabas. They already have. I mean, steal Ulysses. They want him for a mascot. We'll take care of it. Thanks, Mr. Calhoun. I can do my own fight. Just look at them two black eyes, man. Now I ask you, ain't he just a proper mascot for Rogers Rogues? <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant, be my honor to buy you boys a drink. Well, Your Honor, it'd be our pleasure, Mr. Calhoun. Hey, give him a drink. Yeah. Uh, and here's to the cavalry. Here's to the cream of the cavalry, us. Misfits, rebels, no accounts, all of us, officers included. Hey! <laughs> we don't salute, but we sure can shoot. And do with the drop of a hat. And now, Mr. Calhoun, how about honoring our new mascot here? i afraid he can't drink to that, Sergeant. He's already spoken for. Well, uh, thanks for the drinks anyway, Mr. Calhoun. that that gun has caused. There's, there's still a chance that Cachero can be talked out of war. Now we'll talk to him, same way Calhoun talked to him and other raccoon. The Apaches aren't spoiling for a fight, Captain. Your men are. Mister, don't you tell me about Indians. Comanche, Cherokee, Sioux, I fought them all. And it wasn't talk that got them onto reservations in the first place. I'm willing to bet that it will this time, Major. People of Scalp Lock have offered to buy the food that Cachero needs. We'll haul it on the railroad. No. No. 
Armies march on their stomachs, and with no food, they don't march. Now, we proved that to the Rebs when we burned out the Shenandoah Valley. That was a war. What do you think we're in now? I've got a handful of men. I can't afford to strengthen a potential enemy. With full bellies, they'll go back to the reservation. Can you prove that? Do you have the right to speak for the Apaches? Calhoun, they've got time and numbers on their side. Unless I can keep them hungry and disorganized, we can't handle them without a full campaign. The Apache's not looking for a war. They asked for it when they broke the law. Give the plan a chance. Well, you can suit yourselves. You've got 48 hours to talk your heads off. By that time, I'll have a new Gatling gun to replace the one you smashed. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Just a minute, Calhoun. I want to talk to you, and I'm not as diplomatic as Major Rogers. Well, if he's a diplomat, Captain, then you must really be a wildcat. That's usual. When you civilians aren't laughing at us, you're crying for us to run in and save you, or you're bellyaching for us to get out because we've served our purpose. You stop interfering, Calhoun. I know how to handle Cochero. You would if he was what you thought he was, but he isn't. We disagree. But a man doesn't want to listen to the truth, Captain. He's usually got a pretty good reason. Now, what's yours? Why do you want to fight so badly? Because fighting is my profession. Railroading's yours. Don't you get in my way. Mr. Calhoun, those two have spent their lives trying to protect people like you. And I'm trying the best I can to repay them. That's theory, Mr. Calhoun. Or hope, or maybe just talk. And you're trying to put the burden of what could be a big mistake on them. Maybe you're right. I'll take on Cochero myself. Talk to Cachero. I had nothing to do with the firing on your men. I know. I saw. It was the Long Knives. The Apache has no fear of the Long Knife. We won many battles with the Long Knives. But you've lost many wars. They try to kill us anyway. I just had that conversation with an army captain. Our women and children are sick with hunger. We come to hunt, not to fight. Cochero talks like a woman. Our braves gather. Soon we will be strong enough to take what we need. No doubt. But can you hold it? Cochero, old friend, stop this avalanche now, before it crushes us all. What do you ask? Drought's end. So will this one. In the meantime, I'll supply you the food. You bring your chiefs to scalp lock for a parley. Lies. More lies. Are they lies? Or are you hoping they're lies? Take the food, Cachero. Let your braves be men in the eyes of their women. Go in peace. We will come.
We call this little emergency requisition, boy. That's all right, Sarge. No need for you to be butting in. Now, is that a fact? You know, I was just thinking, you're about to get the stuffing kicked clean out of you. From him? No. From me. Like I said, boy, he'd sure make a proper mascot for Rogers Rogues. You ever run across another one like him, well, we'll be glad to buy him from you. Thank you, Sergeant. You're welcome. Major, the 48 hours aren't up yet. Darren, I won't tell you how to run a railroad. Don't you tell me how to run a campaign. I'm telling you Ben's still out there. Are you trying to kill him? I wish you civilians would stop bothering me. I'm not sending a captain and four men out to fight a war. It's a scouting party. Major, telegraph message for you. My new Gatling gun. I expect you to bring it in on the next train. I'll make some room for it on the train of food for Kachar and his people. You cut a dashing figure, sir. I'm very proud of you. Proud of the oldest captain in the cavalry? I'd be proud of you if you were a corporal or a brevet colonel. You tell the truth, honey. You're just tired of making excuses for me as I am. Well, you picked a funny time to start doubting me. I guess now that I've finally got a second chance, we can finally be honest with each other. I've made being proud of me awfully difficult for you. I know that. The coward's daughter. I've always known you weren't a coward. I know. You used to scream that in your sleep. But it's true. Sure it is. But just the two of us knowing it isn't good enough. Dad, make liars of all of them. The whole army. I intend to, baby. I surely do. <laughs> My name is Ben. Did Cochero call you Ben? Manner speaking. He's coming in for a parley. I'm glad you were right, Mr. Calhoun. Perhaps I had you figured wrong. I had you pegged for a fire eater. Could be part of a habit. Anyway, I'm glad no one's getting killed. You've made me very happy, Mr. Calhoun. Don't tell me that one of Roger's robes is a coward. Oh. oh! Excuse me. What upset her? I don't know. Ben, day after tomorrow, we got two boxcars of rations and a Gatling gun. Which one are we gonna need? <laughs> Probably both. Cachero's gonna settle for the food. But we'll need the Gatling gun to hold off for creditors for a spell. In that case, I think petty cash could stand a couple of drinks. Think big, Dave. We'll blow the whole corporate budget on a bottle of champagne. <laughs> Ah! 
Apache's Captain. All right, let's go, Mama. I'll give the orders, Sergeant. There's nothing wrong with my ears, Captain. The Major said for you to listen to me. I listened to you. I didn't like what you said, so I'm countermanding. Well, the book gives you that privilege, sir. Now, what's your strategy? Fight. Fight? You? Meaning? Your reputation's no secret, sir. This is an order, Sergeant, not a secret. We're going to prepare to attack. Yes, sir. How many? Well, they got us better than two to one, sir. Nothing wrong with those odds. I can find fault with them. Sir. They're armed. The Apaches are always armed. All right, you take two men. You cover the left flank. I'll take one and be on the right. Captain, the Major only said to count them. All right, you did. They got us better than two to one. Now, you fire on my command. Yes, sir. trying to prove? Well, in 20 years, I've seen two kinds of glory boys. The first kind loves fighting and just plain don't care. The other kind's more scared of being scared than they are of getting killed. He's too old to be the first kind. Mixing good deeds with good business. Boy, a man once said that's a combination of things that'll give you a good night's sleep. The merchants have rounded up every spare can of beans and sack of flour and scalp lock. They're gonna give it to Cachero as a gesture of good faith till the rations arrive. Well, that's wonderful. And with the town cleaning itself out the way it is, we have a small fortune in freight orders. How small? Enough to meet next month's payroll. Well, the wise man once said, never knock profit. What wise man? Me. There wouldn't be enough left over to buy a few more miles of right away, would there? Oh, if it's not prime land. You know, Ben, the way things turn out, you sure must have lived right at one time in your life. Wish I knew when it was and what I did so I could do it again. Have some coffee. <laughs> Mission accomplished, Major. Where'd you find the Apache weapons, Captain? Engaged and destroyed a raiding party. They had us better than two to one. Well, which way were they headed? Right towards scalp lock, Major. I'll take the rest of your port inside. You too, Stoddard. Attacked whom? They had us outnumbered, Major. They're coming right for us, no matter of fight or run. Who attacked whom? 
You know what you've done. My job. We destroyed a band of hostile Apaches. You got up enough nerve to attack a peace party. We only have your word for their intentions, Calhoun. You wanted your war, Captain. Now you've got it. It's going to be a dandy. Well, we'll let you and the historians worry about how it got started, Mr. Calhoun. Right now, my problem is to finish it. You approve of what he did? He's one of my officers. Anything more you have to say, you say it to me. This is my command. You had very little hope for any peace talks before. Now there's none. soldiering is not ambushing peace parties. And I'm going to hold to that at your court-martial. And I'm out of the detachment. What about the Gatling gun, sir? We haven't got time. We've got one chance in a thousand of getting to Chero before he rounds up his braves. But if we don't get him, we've got no chance at all. Since you like odds against you, Captain, you ought to be delighted about now. Not the point, Anderson. The point is, I don't want to talk to you. All right, so I made a mistake. You never make one? None that I had to bury. Look, I'm a soldier, Calhoun. How do you know they weren't just trying to trick you? You just can't admit you're wrong, can you? Well, nobody's proved for sure I was wrong. It's just possible I taught those Indians a lesson. Scared them back to the reservation. Well, you're not a soldier, Anderson. You're nothing more than a man trying to prove something to himself. And that uniform to you is just a license to kill. Take this time, Captain. If you see an Apache, he's hostile. Dynamite. Right. Ben, may I talk to you? You'll have to make it fast. I, I want to explain about my father. He explained himself. He had a wolf gnawing his insides. 
turn him loose on the whole territory. Ben, it's important that you understand him. No. No, it's important to you. You have to understand him. But this mistake didn't happen yesterday. It happened ten years ago at the Battle of Owens Mill. He was five minutes late, and they've called him a coward ever since. Did you ever stop and think that perhaps they're right and you're wrong? Do you think I haven't been living with that thought? That I'm not afraid I've been wasting my life trying to help him prove something that, that doesn't matter anyway? I'll say one thing, if he is a coward, it's not hereditary. seen so many tracks, Major. Well, which way are they headed? Take your choice. I figure they're all around us. Well, I never figured they'd be wiped out along with their service records. That's a funny thing, Major. I'm 50 years old, and yet I'm only going to be remembered for about eight minutes of my life. Five minutes at Owens Mill, and three minutes this morning. If you're smart enough to know you're not going to be remembered at all. Smart? Me? Ten years I've been planning this three minutes. Thought I had everything worked out perfectly. Except the enemy not being an enemy. Yeah, I've seen a lot of heroes. None of them ever set out to be one. The right time, they thought of the right thing to do. They lost their heads and did it by accident. None of them ever planned to be one. So I found out. I wonder if you did. Well, we owe Scalp Lock a good fight. Let's get to it.
like Rogers found the gun. He surrendering? No, I figure he's gonna talk some more. This time I got no argument. Calhoun, again you show that the white man's word is like dirt beneath our feet. I didn't lie to you, Kajero. The food I promised is in scalp -like. Last time Cochero go for it, his chiefs die. This time I'll bring it to you. When we kill the Long Knives, Cochero will ride in and take it. Many of your braves will die because of that gun. Even if you should win the battle, you'll lose the war. My people were shot like buffalo. That was the wrongdoing of one man. For the ten he killed, we will kill many more. Stop it now, Cochero, before it's too late. Before your people are wiped out. Don't you be a fool, old friend, just because another man was. Give that man to the Apache, and we will go in peace. I can't do that. He'll be punished, but the Long Knives have their honor, too. They'd never give him up. I got respect for that silver tongue of yours. I hope you proved I'm wrong again. I'll repeat what he said to me. They'll ride off in peace if you'll give them Captain Anderson. Not a chance. That's what I told him. On the other hand, Major, they'll probably get me anyway. Anderson, I detest what you did. But they'll take you over our dead bodies. That's what I mean. Captain Anderson. Lower 
charge for the captain. Did he prove anything, Ben? Well, they're not calling him a coward anymore. Is that worth his life? Every man's got to have a reason for living. And I suppose every man's got a price for dying. So now I have to learn to live as a hero's daughter. One mistake cost you ten years of your life. This one could cost you the rest of it. Why don't you just learn to live your own life? It's the only way you're ever going to find any real happiness. <laughs>